2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Rebecca Clark of Sheboygan is the Democratic candidate in the 26th Assembly District. The election is November 6th. Rebecca, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. It's good to be here. Your can web campaign website says stop tax and government giveaways of the last seven years. What are you talking about? Well, I'm, we're looking at a big one uh, with Foxconn, yeah. which is uh, going to be paid for by us. It's not like there is a magical pot of money somewhere that we were going to slowly give them the money. Uh, and when you do that, um, because as this administration, they won't raise taxes. So things have to get cut from somewhere else. And we've seen that with schools. We've seen that uh, with our state parks. Uh, we've seen some very large corporations not paying any state tax. So Wisconsin manufacturers and ag tax credit. Um, and we have things we need to get done here. So we need to be more responsible uh, with our taxpayer money and actually get some stuff done. Well, uh, the, the Walker administration, of course, says Foxconn doesn't get a dime unless they hire those people and invest that much money. You don't trust them to I do don't. That? I think that's why, even as a voter, I would feel more comfortable with new leadership in Madison to oversee this because it seems like every time I open the paper, there's a new deal or a new size or a new bottom uh, payment that people would make at this, uh, at this business. And at this point, I wanna get in there and shed some light on it, really see what's in writing, uh, and, and just you know be a watchdog for this, this deal. The assembly gave Foxconn-like tax breaks to Kimberly Clark. Now, it didn't pass the Senate. Right. How would you have voted on the Kimberly Clark incentives? <laughs> yeah, it's, it seems like we might have created a bit of a precedent here uh, with businesses, large businesses, looking for a, just a little bit more help um, to stay in Wisconsin. I think it is different than Foxconn though. If you think about Kimberly Clark, um, Harley Davidson, those are companies that do actually have ties and history in Wisconsin. Workers that have been working there for a long time that are parts of that community. So I think it is a little bit different. It's just unfortunate that we've, again, set this huge precedent of if you want to stay, we'll pay for it. That's unfortunate. Would you be a yes or no if Kimberly Clark? I think I'd have to look at the whole package and, and see the timeline of it. I don't know that we can afford it now with what we're looking at giving Foxconn, so we'd have to look at it. The potential money that would go to Foxconn, Foxconn excuse me, you said should be diverted to what state programs? Oh, I think I would like to give back to funding our state parks. Uh, I think that's a huge um, resource for the state, but it's also a big in tourism dollars. Um, getting back to funding our schools, um, getting back to putting those money into transportation. I'm sure we're going to talk about that later. Yeah. But just the goods and services, even you know, looking at funding our municipalities at the same level that they were, so they can get some of those local services done that are being cut. The oh, let's go to transportation. Let's go. The funding impasse in the capital continues. How would you solve it? Yes, I can't believe we're still talking about this, Steve. It seems like we covered this a little bit in 16. Um, Yes, it is a crazy mess right now. And even reading, we took $90 million away from the transportation fund for Foxconn. Uh, I just read recently that the DOT has lost some, some federal funding that was supposed to go to regional planning, regional projects, Madison and Eau Claire. And when they went to the DOT to ask for this money for, pro for projects, road projects that are already being done, the DOT said the money was not there something about instead of a five-year budget they went to a four-year so 2018 doesn't exist anymore it's a bit of a mess so we need to get in and look at this budget and see what's there and how it's being allocated right now there just isn't enough transparency and in terms of raising the funds i think we need to put everything on the table um, in my county sheboygan county again because municipalities are feeling a crunch we actually raised our, our sales tax and our wheel tax, which allowed us to get a few more miles of road done. And, and knocking on doors in my community, they appreciated that, how efficiently it was done. They met their goals. 
So people were already paying the tax, but people aren't seeing things getting done in their local areas, and You're that's You're not closing the door on a gas tax increase? No, I'm not. What about tolling? I, I like the idea of tolling once we're a little bit more stable financially, which I don't think we are now, because the initial cost of putting those tolls up is pretty expensive. We also have seen studies that once you have the toll, it can force a lot of traffic onto local roads that we're already not fixing. So I think that's, that's not a short-term solution for me. Local governments have been dealing with the levy limits for 14 years. Mm -hmm. Time to keep them, loosen them, get rid of them. I think we definitely need to loosen them. Uh, looking across the state, our local municipalities do operate very efficient, efficiently. Uh, I've been seeing them do more and more with less and less, and I think I'd like to give them back the opportunity to raise for those specific things that they, that they need. They, they're the ones that can explain it to their local municipality like they did in Sheboygan County. And I, I think they deserve that um, responsibility back. I mean, I think they passed over 100 bills that took away local control, um, whether it's you know, shoreline zoning or you know, revenues for schools. And I think that's too much power in Madison. Let's talk about schools. The current state budget did have a significant increase in state aid to our K-12 public schools. Mm -hmm. Do you believe we need another significant increase in the next state budget? Why? Yes, I do. And I hate to be a naysayer or a negative Nancy, but I saw this um, historic increase as really kind of an election year uh, gambit. I think it was something to, that was supposed to make the governor look like an education governor when we know that the levels that we'll be at in 2018 and 19 are not even going to be where we were in 2011. Uh, we've seen you know, over a billion dollars in cuts. 2016, we saw over 74 referendum across the state asking for over $850 billion. And so people recognize that their schools need help. People in my district, this is one of the first things I hear about when I'm knocking on doors. They love their local public schools and they're seeing you know st teachers struggling uh, crumbling buildings so yes i think we need to get back to to funding levels the voucher the choice program has expanded it started out 25 27 years ago in milwaukee we're seeing now statewide your position on the choice program i think we need to cap it all together um, in talking with my local school administrators i don't think we'll get rid of the voucher schools that we currently have but we do need to cap them all together and make sure that we are funding our public schools first. Uh, this is our constitutional imperative, right, that we provide free quality K-12 education and these voucher schools are taking the money away from the public schools and they don't always have the same oversight and we as taxpayers don't always have um, a say in what those programs are or the success of those programs. So we just need to cap them all together. Let's turn to health care. How do we protect and expand health care in rural Wisconsin? I'm glad you asked this question because this is something uh, I've been hearing about. I mean, you know, in my district, I think we're about 60% people are em employed or have employee-based insurance. We do have some rural areas though. And, you know, I will be a state representative. So, it, you know, not just looking out for Sheboygan, but I do need to look out for the rest of the state. And I've been hearing from friends that live in the North Woods, we have women who are pregnant who are having to drive three hours for appointments or even to have a child. So yeah, I think we need to look at some of these uh, incentives, whether uh, we need to take the federal money to expand these programs, but then can we get more of those federal clinics uh, into those areas? I think we really need to look at how we can incentivize um, nurses and doctors to be in those areas and call that home. I think access is a real problem right now. Does the state government have a role in recruiting and retaining physicians, nurses, and other medical professionals? Yeah, I, I wouldn't think that initially, but just in looking at it and the crisis that we have, um, I, I would be open to looking at, you know, something we might even do for teachers, because the teacher shortage up in that area as well, looking at starting wages, you know, starting salaries, and can we look at um, incentivizing people to be up there in those ways? I think it's worth looking at. Um, Again, we'll have to look at our budget overall. The pilot program between state government and Delta Dental that provides dental care in some uh, for low-income residents, right. should that be a priority in the next Medicaid budget? Absolutely. And again, I'm really <clears throat> glad you asked this question because in my district, we do have a federally funded clinic, a free health clinic. Um, 
they have an in-school dental program um, that has helped over 1,400 kids in my district. Because even with these packages, even if you have a great employee health care package, a lot of times dental is not included. And it's critical to young health. I had actually talked to my dentist about this, and I was joking when I said, oh, you must be doing a lot of dentures now because, you know, all the baby boomers and stuff. And she said, actually, no, it's the young kids because they're not getting the cleanings, they're not getting the treatments, they're you know, drinking a lot of soda, and it's a real crisis. So if we can get, especially for kids, these programs, I'm 100% behind it. This is your second campaign for the assembly. Are you hearing from caregivers? AARP estimates that 578,000 Wisconsin residents per, or care for a family member, a neighbor, someone they love. Would you support laws or regulations that call for hospitals to recognize family caregivers when their loved ones are hospitalized, the CARE Act? Yes, and I, I need to look at that a little bit more closer, but I have had friends that, that work in long care facilities. I think you, you and I have both read that a lot of these are closing or looking at, at bankruptcy. And another issue, um, one of the reasons my friend left that, um, the profession, not necessarily in home care, is that the pay just wasn't there. Um, and I've been reading articles that people who aren't working full time, for example, 20, 30 hours a week, a lot of that is because they are doing 10, 20 hours a week of in-home care of an elderly parent or a sick child. And we don't monetize that, you know. Um, so that's something we need to look at. Uh, I know hospitals would probably appreciate this, this as well because people do heal better at home. Um, but it's just a question of making sure that those caregivers have the tools and the training that they need um, and an advocate in the hospitals that they can work with. So I think this would be a win-win. State government is spending uh, up to $100 million on school safety grants. Do we also need new gun laws? Yes. Again, I think that $100 million was kind of an election year you know, giveaway. It is not enough. And it's a one-time thing. In looking at it for myself, in the schools in Wisconsin right now, we have a serious problem with counselors, right? We don't have enough counselors providing that on-the-ground mental health care. So the federal average that they want you to have is one counselor for 250 kids. Right now, we have one counselor for 1,400 kids in the state of Wisconsin. So we are failing in this. And that is really boots on the ground that could prevent, I think, a lot more of these tragedies. Um, and, it, and it's not just gun violence. We're seeing drug problems, foster care. Teachers are having to deal with more and more. In talking to some of my uh, school supervisors, they're going to look at, they don't know how to fill out these grants. It goes through the Department of Justice. It's kind of pretty loosey-goosey. But the number one thing they're going to ask for is counselors, you know, paid staff to be on the ground. That's what they really need. And we need to make sure as legislators that that stays in the budget, no matter the budget crunch. The debate over prisons, uh, Democratic candidates for governor, some of them said we could cut the prison population in half mm -hmm. over a few years. We have two prisons that were built in the 1800s. Right. Do we need a new state prison? We do not need a new state prison. Um, I think in, in, in reading for myself, good Lord, you have Minnesota and even Texas are closing prisons, right? Because of these programs that will combat things like drug abuse, uh, combat things like recidivism, making sure that people have access to job training and follow up, not just with your parole officer, but with meaningful mentorship. Uh, I think that can help. I would also like to look at um, increasing funding for the um, public defender's office. Uh, right now, Governor Walker just threw a lot of money at the prosecutors, but that doesn't provide the checks and balances and help those people that can't afford um, either the fines that they're looking at, how to get them out of jail uh, while they're waiting for their trial. So I think increasing some access to public defender funding would really help, um, but we have a lot of work to do, and a new prison is not the answer. UW system budget, we've had a tuition freeze on resident tuition freeze for six years. Yeah. Uh, the governor would like that extended for a seventh and eighth year. Your position? I, I understand the freeze because we middle class families are still struggling to pay for college. Um, but if you look at what's happened because of this freeze, especially UW Stevens Point, which is my alma mater, go pointers, uh, we are looking at um, closing down degrees, just absolutely not offering them anymore, um, having a hard time hiring and keeping professors and, and key staff. 
So we need to fund this freeze. And we also need to look at ways absolutely to make college more affordable, refinancing student loan debt. I think that the state needs to get involved in this. Um, but we can't keep taking money away from our university system, which is a huge economic engine, and it's, it's where our workforce comes from. The bills that would legalize recreational and medical marijuana, your position? I think it's going to happen. Um, on both fronts? Yes. I think the medical marijuana is one that I hear a lot about, um, and especially in terms of folks who are working with people with PTSD, um, looking at the opioid problem. Um, I think there's some solutions out here that, we, that other states are using that we aren't even looking at. Um, and if you look at other states like Colorado, which, you know, that was kind of our Petri dish there, um, millions and millions of dollars from this program going to education. So I think with regulation and looking at what other states have done, because it is getting confusing now if one state has one thing and the other state has another, we need to get organized on this and, and hopefully get some revenue out of it. Differences between you and the, the Republican incumbent you're challenging on November 6th? Yeah, it'll be Terry again, Terry Katzma, um, who is a very nice guy and we've met and we've talked. Um, I think the biggest issue for people will be, um, you know, just look at how he votes, you know. Um, we today are talking about a lot of the same problems that we had in 2016, which means, um, in, like for example, instead of taking the Medicare expansion, we budgeted $500 million to boost up um, the Affordable Care Act. And even Republicans admitted they don't know where that money's coming from. So yeah, I think it's just time for new leadership and new ideas. And um, so I, I look forward to getting a chance. Rebecca Clark of Sheboygan. Uh, Sheboygan, thank you. I'll, 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 I found my place. There you Let's go. Let's start over. Rebecca Clark of Sheboygan is a Democratic candidate in 26th Assembly District. Rebecca, thank you for again visiting with Wisconsin Eye. Thanks, and go vote. <laughs> Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel.